Hello there, everybody. This is Mel Allen. Time to get in tune with Major League Highlights of the Week. The Giants race into L.A., tuned up and keyed up. The Astros change their tune and prepare for takeoff. The Red Sox and Tigers take off after each other. And at times, they also take off after the umpires. So do the Cardinals, who lately have been playing out of tune. While hitting maestro Rod Carew has a ball, swinging his baton to the sweetest tune of all, a 400 average. So friends, stay tuned for all this and more, coming up next on This Week in Baseball. In the National League West, shock waves have begun to register between San Francisco and Los Angeles. John the Count Montefusco is sound again, and so is his team, the San Francisco Giants. With their confidence and enthusiasm boiling over, the Giants rolled into Dodger Stadium with a seven-game winning streak. But the Dodgers were out to end that streak and knocked the Giants off their first-place perch. Rick Mundy did his best with a couple of three-run homers. So did the cheering crowd, which turned out to see the resurgence of baseball's most famous rivalry. But giant bats could not be silenced. Bill Madlock continued his recent hitting tear. And with a little help from his friends, San Francisco won its eighth straight game. But the next day, manager Joe Altabelli's men took a spill. Having just arrived from the Oakland A's, Bill North was put to work in the bottom of the ninth. Scored tied Gary LaBelle on the mound. A leadoff double for North. That set the crowd to buzzing and set the stage for this scene. Bill Russell up, the bases full of Dodgers. Randy Moffat in relief. Now watch closely. The umpire rules the pitch hit Russell, forcing in the winning run. The Giants cry foul, foul ball. Judge for yourself. Did the ball hit the bat or the batter? Well, no matter. The Giants' winning streak was over. The Dodgers also won the third game of the series, bunching together at the top, San Francisco, Cincinnati, and Los Angeles. Meanwhile, the Houston Astros have been firing up their engines with hopes of making this a four-team race. Astro bats have come to life. Bob Watson has anchored Houston's attack for years with his clutch hitting. And once again, he's reaching the gaps for extra bases and RBIs. Lead-off speech to Terry Poole surprised everyone last year with his sharp hitting. And he's proving it was no fluke now with an average riding above 300. Jose Cruz, one of the best kept secrets in the National League. Another key to Houston's success. With a tough early season schedule, the Astros got off to a sputtering start, losing their first five games. But now they're mighty hot and firing their guns at everybody. Enos Cabell at third. and left field. Go, man, go! And on the mound, the Astros keep their rifle arms like Joaquin Andujar. And strikeout ace, James Rodney Richard, who started slowly, 
but in the last couple of weeks has become almost unhittable. Don't forget the Astros, because James Rodney and company are just raring to take off for the top. In the National League East, the Chicago Cubs continued to edge closer and closer to the top. Cub faithfuls have been watching from the rooftops and filling Wrigley Field for years, even though the Cubs haven't won a pennant since 1945. They could use a little luck, and maybe this will be the year. They took on the Cardinals this week, who've had no luck at all. Just watch. Lou Brock can't believe it. These days, the ball just seems to roll Chicago's way. Bobby Mercer wants to keep it rolling. He's always been a clutch performer, but never on a pennant winner. And you can bet he's mighty hungry, as is this whole ball club. But sometimes a guy can get too hungry. With Mercer at third and Wrigley Field excited, get ready for this. Gary Templeton is there. Oh, man, where did he come from? And Mercer tags up, heads to the plate. It didn't work that time, but aggressive base running can pay off. Another close call, and catcher Ted Simmons can't stand still. But then any man has a right to gripe when his team is in the midst of an 11-game losing streak. But you won't find the Cubs' Dave Kingman complaining. He just loves hitting in Wrigley Field. With Sky King doing his thing and a little bit of long-awaited luck, the Cubs could just make believers out of more than just the Wrigley Rooters. It may be an old standard, but here's a smash hit for everyone. Take me out to the ball game. Take our fine feathered friend, please do. Everyone is into the act, from the East Coast to the West. But perhaps no one sings louder than Chicago White Sox fans, led by announcer Harry Carey. Take me out to the ball game. Me out to the crowd, buy me some peanuts and cracker jack. I don't care if I ever get back away from root, root, root for the white socks. If they don't win, it's a shame. For it's one, two, three strikes you're out at the old ball game. How about that? Well, these are people who don't mind putting on a show. In fact, you might say at Comiskey Park, the fans are often the stars of the show, especially now with all that sunshine just beaming down on the bleachers. White Sox fans are not known for modesty, whether cooling off in the showers or warming up to the camera. These folks come out to enjoy themselves. Of course, they're also not very modest about their favorite team, the White Sox. When the bat cracks ring out in Comiskey Park, you'd swear it was the 4th of July. The noise level can be deafening from the explosive scoreboard out in the outfield to the fans singing their own special theme song. The 
White Sox got off to a slow start in the pennant race, but the ballpark excitement continues. All hail to the fans and owner Bill Beck, who still marvels at their baseball enthusiasm. The greatest day I've had in, in baseball, strange enough, that I can remember anyhow, and there have been some pretty good ones, was the last day of last season. We weren't, didn't have a chance to move up or down in the standings. And we had some 22,000 people. And we lost the ball game three to two. And the fans wouldn't let the ball players off the field. They cheered them and made them come back for, uh, to doff their hats and take a bow. An hour and a half to two hours later, there were 15,000 people still wandering around, singing, all Lang Syne, singing their song and so on. They're like I was. There's no showman quite like Bill Beck, and he'll put anyone on stage, even Henry Mazur of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Hit it, man. performance. Take a bow, everybody. In the American League East, the young Detroit Tigers still refused to take a bow to anyone. The Red Sox came to Detroit tied for first place with the Tigers, hoped to gain ground. But the Tigers weren't about to roll over and play dead. Just watch Ron LaFleur in center field. What a catch. But the Red Sox say, shucks, that's nothing. Just watch our man and right, right evidence. How about that? But when you hit the ball far enough, defense becomes academic. And Jim Rice does that a lot, even when hitting to the opposite field. But the Tigers have muscles to flex, too, like catcher Milt May. And so they battled, back and forth. Reliever Bill Campbell made his first appearance since April and saved a victory for the Red Sox. Campbell is Boston's key man in the bullpen, but the Tigers have one of their own, lefty John Hiller. He too saved an important game. So where did that leave everyone? Well, it left them with a split in the four-game series. And when the clubs divided a doubleheader, it left some people in a rage. Boston's Fred Lynn was huffing and puffing in the first game, got the thumb. So did his manager, Don Zimmer. You may have guessed that Boston lost that one. Well, Detroit lost the second game. And this time, it was Tiger manager Ralph Houck's turn to rage. The umpires sent him packing, too. But that didn't stop the Major from performing his act. And it didn't stop the Tigers and Red Sox from huddling even closer at the top of the standings. Hush. Dark shadows cross the moon. Strange spells are cast upon the earth. And so fly catchers of the night beware, especially in Los Angeles, land of unseen forces and mishaps unforeseen. Watch. And it is gone. A home run with an assist from the left fielder. An odd twist to the plot. Ah, but who's the villain? The moon, perhaps? Another twist. The scene of the crime is still Dodger Stadium. A different batter and a different Dodger out in left field. And...
it's a home run again. Once again, must be that old Devil Moon. Devil Moon, cast your spells. But surely the moon can't be blamed for everything. But look again. What mischief still lurks ahead? Moonlight encounters in the stands. And once in a blue moon, even on the field. Sweet kiss of victory. Concluding this week's Moonlight Serenade. Now to baseball less bizarre. Watch some infield sparkles. New York's Willie Randolph. Chicago's Bill Butner charging from first. Take a good look at this effort. The full stretch, California's Bobby Grinch. More plays at second base, Philadelphia's Bud Harrelson learning a new position. Any second baseman can learn from Cleveland's Dwayne Kuyper. Watch this. Magnificent. So magnificent, we just better take another look. You'd swear Dwayne Kuyper had radar instead of eyes. Those were great plays. Now for some great performances. First, Rod Carew. He's at it again. Rod broke the 400 hitting barrier this week with a three for four performance against the Royals. The Twins won the game three to two as Carew scored one run, drove home the other two. As for that 400 average, only time will tell. Another twin, reliever Mike Marshall, also had a big week. He won one game, saved four others. Quite a comeback for a guy who hadn't even pitched in a year. But that wasn't the week's only comeback. Cleveland left-hander David Clyde came out of nowhere to win two ball games. His first big league victories in four years. Clyde last made headlines as a teenage sensation with the Texas Rangers. And now, just as suddenly, he's winning the hearts of Cleveland fans. The Dodgers' Lee Lacey has been winning games in the late innings as a pinch hitter extraordinaire. This season, Lacey hit three pinch hit homers in three official at bats. He tied the record for most consecutive pinch hit homers with two. And then after walking his next trip, made it three in a row. No wonder he's called the best ninth man in baseball by his manager, Tom Lasorda. Dodger fans were also cheering another record holder, Stan Wasiak, who's won over 2,000 games while managing 29 straight years in the Dodger farm system. For someone who loves baseball that much, a big round of applause. And here's a man who also deserves applause. Houston fireballer James Rodney Richards. 
the recipient of this week's Gillette Special. And did he ever earn it? Richard shut out the Phillies on just two hits, striking out nine, and then pitched a four-hit shutout against the Braves, striking out eight more. So it's no surprise that James Rodney Richard leads the National League with 74 strikeouts in 65 innings, while yielding only 44 base hits. Congratulations, J.R. Goodbye, everybody. See you next week on This Week in Baseball.